Hey, and welcome to the 60 Leader Podcast. This show is for those with an insatiable desire to travel and to find adventure. If that's you, you'll fit right in. Here you'll find travel tips and stories that nurture your mind and soul. Thanks for tuning in, and let's get started. Hello, and welcome to the 60 Leader Podcast. This is episode 3, How to Pack for Your Trip Around the World. So, Happy New Year's. I hope everyone had a wonderful New Year's. Mine was great. I ate a lot of barbecued meat. Got a little sick, but that's okay. It was fun. And I hope everyone has a New Year's resolution, which includes a bit of traveling. Why not? It's 2020. It's a new decade. So just quit your job, pack a backpack, and just go on the road for a few months. Why not? You're young. You're healthy. Now's the time to do it. Not when you're old. Not when your back's about to go bad, when your knee's about to fail. Do it while you're young. Let's do it. Okay, so let's talk about packing for your trip around the world. So when I was packing for my trip, I tried following the simple rule, which is less is better. The less things you'll take on your trip, the better off you'll be. Because I wanted to be comfortable when I traveled. Going from country to country, I didn't want to have to worry about struggling with large luggage, as I enter the train or the bus. And if you take just what's essential and travel light, your trip will be even less stressful because you're not having to worry about being accountable for so much gear and you'll have a much easier time going from one place to another. And along with that willingness to travel light, it really helped me to just accept that on this trip, I'm going to lose something or have something stolen. And that forced me to pack items that didn't have much value but was still useful and just made my trip stress-free because I told myself if I lose something or have something stolen, the item is not valuable and not worth a lot of money, so it's okay, just move on. And also, I bought travel insurance for this trip, so if I had something stolen, I could just file a police report and get reimbursed for the cost of my item. So one more reason to not worry about it. If I lost something or had something stolen, cool. Buy it again if you really need it or just move on. It's fine. And I've met a lot of travelers who had their things stolen. For example, in South America, I met a lot of people who had their cell phones taken out of their bags or their pockets. I met people who had their credit cards stolen. I've had people who were physically thrown to the ground and had their belongings stolen. Luckily, the police was able to recover his backpack and his passport. His passport was the most important thing. And luckily, he got that back. But his money, the soccer jersey he just bought, stolen from him. Gone. And for that instance, it happened very unexpectedly. He was buying some soccer jerseys in La Boca, which is a very dangerous and shady district in Buenos Aires, Argentina. And he was walking out of the stadium where he bought the jerseys, walking down the road. And next thing you know, it, a couple of guys jumped him, threw him to the ground. One guy held him down while the other guy took his belongings. And luckily he wasn't hurt, but I'm sure it was nerve wracking. So you have to accept that things like that might happen. There's certainly ways to mitigate it, but there might be situations where you let your guard down and someone's going to sneak up on you, take your wallet, your backpack, or any other belonging. Or you might forget that one day to lock up your stuff in your hostel and someone comes in and steals your stuff. That does happen all the time. And depending on where you go, the thieves can be a little crafty. For example, in Argentina, there's the famous mustard trick for which a thief might see you come down the street. And when you get near them, they'll spray mustard or ketchup on you. And they'll pretend that it was an accident and then try to help you clean up. And if you're wearing a backpack, they'll try to have you take it off so that they could clean off the mustard. But what you don't realize is that 
someone else is behind you, ready to take that backpack or pickpocket you. And that's a common problem in Buenos Aires, Argentina. The British Embassy in Argentina actually made an animated poster that was posted in my hostel, and it warned tourists about that trick. And I've met someone who was almost a victim of that trick. So things like that happen. For me personally, I almost had my iPhone stolen in Buenos Aires as well. So I was waiting for an Uber to come pick me up, and I was checking the Uber on my phone, and there was a guy on a bicycle. He came by and tried swiping the phone out of my hand, and luckily I had a death grip on my phone, and he didn't get it. But things like that happen quickly, and you cannot always prepare for them. So I recommend just buy some travel insurance and just accept the fact that you're going to lose stuff or you might get your things stolen. It will really put you at ease and make you less stressful about traveling. And let's talk about what I packed for my trip. What did I pack? So I took a 60 liter backpack, hence the name of my channel, 60 liter backpack, and it was a North Face backpack. It was pretty beat up to start with. I've had it for about five, six years. Some of the buckles were broken, but it was still functional. And it's been my trusty backpack for a long time now. For clothes, I've only taken clothes from cheap clothing companies like Uniqlo or H&M. If you want to get really cheap, you could also go to the Salvation Army or Goodwill or any donation clothes store where you could buy clothes for really cheap. And the idea was to take clothes that were already worn out and clothes that I can just throw away or donate at the end of my trip. So I took a couple long sleeve shirts, four pairs of pants. One was a cargo slash outdoors pants for hiking and volunteering. And I took one Patagonia waterproof shell. So this is the one expensive piece of gear I took because I knew I was going to be hiking and exposed to the outdoors and the elements. So I just wanted one item that would keep me dry and I didn't want to be cheap about that. But at the same time, I've had this jacket for seven years. So it wasn't a new jacket, it was pretty old. And I took a couple t-shirts and a couple button-up shirts and a week's worth of underwear and plenty of socks. Do not skimp out on the socks. Keep your feet dry, keep your feet clean, and switch out your socks often. It's like that scene from Forrest Gump where he gets to Vietnam and Lieutenant Dan tells him, the most important rule in my platoon Keep your feet dry and socks. Because you're going to be walking and hiking a lot, so you want some good, clean, comfortable socks for your feet. Save your feet. You will thank yourself later. And enough of my sock rant. Let's continue on. So I also took one pair of basketball shorts or gym shorts for sleeping purposes and possibly working out if I felt like it. And for my hiking boots, I took a pair of Timberlands hiking boots. They were awesome, absolutely waterproof, great on the feet. And I also bought some insoles for them to make walking more comfortable. And if you do decide to buy a new pair of boots, make sure you break them in before you go on your trip. And I took one key lock for my trip as well. So at most hostels, there'll be lockers where you could lock up your valuables and you need that lock or you're going to have to rent one from the hostel and pay a little bit of money. And if you're going to be in a dorm room with four to 16 other people, you're going to want a way to lock up your stuff. So take a lock with you. And I also took a pair of flip flops for showers because some of those 
shower floors at the hostels can be pretty gross. I took one beanie because I like beanies. And it was winter, so I wanted to keep my head warm. And I took some eating utensils. F fork, knife, spoon. And one Tupperware for packing lunches. Often I would cook at the hostel, pack a lunch, and take it with me while I was hiking or exploring the city. Just to save some money and have lunch available. Pretty handy. And I took a towel with me as well because you'll need a way to dry yourself after a shower. You can rent towels at hostels, but why pay the money? Just take, take one with you. And I took one that was pretty old. And same thing, the idea was at the end of my trip, I was going to just donate it or throw it away. And I also took some Tide Pods and a packet of single-use detergent. Because you're going to have to do laundry at a certain point. And those Tide Pods and detergents come in handy when you're at the hostel and you want to do some laundry. Now, at the hostels, if you want to do laundry, you have to pay. And they'll often give you some detergent when you pay as well. But sometimes the hostels offer free use of the laundry machines. And if that's the case, then the Tide Pods or the detergent that you bring can come in handy. And next item I took was... Uh, electrical outlet converter for the countries that I'll be traveling. So I had one that was good for all the continents. And along with that, I took one iPhone cell phone charger as well, obviously, to charge up my phone. And for the electrical outlet, co outlet converter, try to get one with a USB port so that you could just plug in your cell phone USB charger into the input and then you can charge up your phone easy and I took one more backpack with me so the backpack I took was like a backpack that you would take to school I think it was like an 18 liter something small and how I would do it is when I was going to the airport or something like that I would wear the 60 liter backpack on my back and have the smaller backpack in front and inside the smaller backpack, I had my Canon 6D, two camera lenses, some extra batteries, a travel journal, pens, and I brought my MacBook Pro and charger with me as well. And the MacBook Pro was from 2012, so it was pretty old. So I didn't really worry about having that stolen or losing it. And again, I had travel insurance, so I wasn't really worried about it. And I use that to work on photography, such as photo editing. And I also brought my laptop for taxes. As silly as it sounds, I brought my laptop because I knew I had to do my federal and state income taxes while I was on the road. So for Americans, they have to submit federal and state income taxes by April of that particular year. So I had to have my laptop so I could pull up the necessary tax applications, compile all the tax documents, and submit my federal and state income taxes electronically. And I wasn't going to even attempt to do my taxes on my phone. I felt like that was a disaster waiting to happen. So I took my laptop so I could work on it on a bigger screen with the keyboard and just do my taxes the right way. And it was extremely useful to have a second backpack because I used that smaller backpack as a day pack. So if I was going hiking, I would throw my lunch in there, some other gear. Or if I was going to a coffee shop, throw my laptop in there. And I remember in Uruguay, I took a surfing lesson. And so I do some spare clothes in there so I could change afterwards. So the second backpack is pretty useful. All right, and let's now talk about what was in my wallet? What do you need in your wallet for your trip? So I had two IDs on me. 
One was my driver's license, and another was from a different government agency. And I took two IDs just in case I lost one. And also, at some hostels, they require your ID as a deposit for the key. And if you don't have two IDs from two government agencies, take a library card with your picture on it, preferably, or take your Costco or Sam's membership card. I used my Sam's membership card as a key deposit one time at a hostel, and it had my picture, it had my name, and that's all they needed. So if you don't have two forms of ID, take your Costco or Sam's membership cards. One more reason to get a membership at Costco or Sam's. And like I talked about in my previous podcast, I took two credit cards with me just in case I lost one. And I took an AT&T phone card with me as well. So there's 20 bucks on that phone card. And it came in very handy because there were a few occasions where I had to call customer support of an airline or call back home. And having that phone card was really handy. And if you don't have a phone card, you're going to have to use a third party app like Facebook or WhatsApp to make phone calls. Or you're just going to have to incur the charge, an international phone call charge, to make a phone call back home. And those fees can be really expensive, so I would recommend getting a phone card. And speaking of my phone, I also downloaded a bunch of apps to help me navigate various cities, find lodging, and cheap flights. So I'll just list them out. They are HostelWorld, Booking.com, All Trails which is an app for hiking trails, Google Maps, Couchsurfing, which you can use to find lodging like I talked about in my previous podcast, the Canon Camera Connect app, which allows you to connect your camera to your phone so you could transfer photos, and that came in pretty handy for making Instagram posts. Some airline apps such as Skyscanner, which it's like Google Flights if you have used it, and it gives you a bunch of cheap options for getting to one destination from another. Maps Me. Now, this is a very underrated app. Maps Me is an offline map which collects every single map you could think of for every city or location around the world. And it's an offline app, but the maps update, I believe, when you connect to a Wi Fi. So, if you don't have a data package for your phone, it's handy to have Maps Me just in case you get lost and you need directions. Oh, and get a data data plan for your phone. Either a SIM card, which is sold at every airport or every small store around the world, or sign up with a carrier like T-Mobile that offers unlimited international access for uh, 3G data, 2G data, I believe. So that's pretty useful for using Google Maps, which I used a lot. And it's also useful for messaging apps like Facebook and WhatsApp. It's not the greatest internet, but it's enough to use Google Maps and those messaging services. And often you'll realize that those three apps are everything you need. So you don't really need to use internet for anything else. And I had a collection of transportation apps for the cities that I visited and the countries I've, I've visited. And I also had an app called Polar Steps. Now, this is not required, but it's just a fun app to have. So Polar Steps takes your location and GPS function on your phone and places pins for every city or country you've been to. And it's just fun to see where you've been and what your travel route was. So it's pretty neat. All right, and now that we talked about what was in my backpack, my wallet, and my phone for my trip. Let's talk about what I lost and got stolen on my trip. So the first thing I lost was my lock. The lock that I used for my lockers. I don't know how I lost it, but I think it fell out when I was packing some stuff away. And I lost it. So, oh well. The next thing I lost was my iPhone charger. I left it at the hostel. I left it plugged in when I was waiting for my bus and forgot to grab it when I left. So, boo, gone. And I actually bought two more in Sweden, and I had one stolen from me at the host- at another hostel. I left it plugged in, and when I came back into the hostel, the 
charger was gone and i think the person next to me the the bunk next to me was also gone so i have a feeling that he might have taken it but who knows and i had one baseball cap stolen don't know why don't know why someone would want to use baseball cap but it was taken out of my hostel it was a pretty cool cap i was a little bummed out but it's okay easily replaceable and like i talked about earlier i had one attempted theft of my iphone i lost a lot of shampoo bottles i would buy them at the store use it and leave it at the hostel bathroom and i lost a bunch of them and i lost an expensive tube of toothpaste which really annoyed me it's funny isn't it you get annoyed about losing a tube of toothpaste but yeah i lost it it's gone it was expensive to buy and it was annoying that i lost it but it's gone and i lost a bottle of bug spray and i lost my towel so like i predicted i lost some stuff got some stuff stolen but all those items were not worth a lot of money so it's okay easily replaceable so it's all right all right let's talk about what broke during my trip so things break especially if you're moving around a lot you drop things you drop things <laughs> plug him into the wrong outlet, it blows up, it happens. All right, so what broke? My MacBook charger broke. So I was in Norway and I plugged in my MacBook charger along with my adapter. Then I heard a loud pop. Then the charger got really, really, really hot, then stopped working. So I had to buy another one at the Gatwick Airport in London during my layover. Fun. My outlet converter broke. It stopped working after a while. So I had to buy another one while I was in the Czech Republic. I had to buy a pair of pants because a pair that I brought with me ripped. So I went to Levi's. Bought a new pair of stretchy jeans. Now, if you have never worn stretchy jeans... I highly recommend them. They are very comfortable and I don't think I'll ever go back to regular jeans. Trust me, try them out, you'll love them and never go back. And I broke a camera lens filter. The camera lens was in my backpack and I guess I put too much weight on it or something. The camera lens filter shattered. So one more thing I broke. Now let's talk about what I left behind. So I left behind a pair of running shoes because they were just worn out after all that walking every single day they just wore out and they were no good i left behind a hooded sweatshirt at a hostel staying at because when i got to south america it was pretty warm so i had no need for a thick hooded sweater sweatshirt and I got it from H&M anyways for cheap, so it wasn't really a big loss. I just gave it to the receptionist and told her you could donate it or do something with it, whatever. And I also had a Levi bomber jacket that I brought with me for this trip. But again, it was too hot to wear it, and the colors were all faded and everything was worn out, so it was time to let it go anyways. And it just didn't make sense. I was in the jungle at the time. And to have that jacket around just was extra weight and just made no sense. So I gave it away. And that jacket's the one that I started my trip in Europe with. So getting rid of it cleared up a lot of room in my backpack. Alright, so those are the items that I took with me on my trip to South America and Europe. And I hope this helps you pack for your own trip. And looking back, there's some things I would have done differently. I think I got most of the stuff right, but there are a couple items that I wish I didn't take with me and I actually wish that I traveled even lighter. So for example, I would have not taken my laptop with me if I could do it all over again. Although it was nice having a device with a keyboard and a bigger screen, it was just so heavy 
to carry around. And I was carrying two backpacks, so it's just extra weight that I didn't need. So next time, I'm not taking a laptop. If I need to do something important like taxes, I'll do it at an internet cafe for a day or a place where I could borrow a computer for one day. I'm not taking another laptop. And I'm also taking a smaller camera next time with just one lens. The Canon 6D along with the two lenses were just too big, too bulky, and again, it's extra weight that I didn't need. So next time, I'm getting a smaller camera. And looking back, I think I could have done the whole trip with the 45 liter backpack instead of a 60. I would have to get rid of the laptop, get a smaller camera, and use a foldable drawstring backpack instead of a regular smaller backpack like the 18 liter I took. And if I've gotten a pair of boots that were for both hiking and for casual wear, then I wouldn't have needed to take a pair of running shoes with me, saving even more room. And a 45 liter backpack fits perfectly in the overhead compartment of an airplane, so I would have saved some money by not having to check a bag in, so it's one more reason to use a 45 liter backpack next time. So here you go, my packing list. The items that I took with me on my trip to South America and Europe. I hope you can do a better job than I did. If you have any suggestions for what I could have done better, leave a comment below. And I hope you enjoyed episode 3 of the 60 Liter Podcast. Check me out on Instagram, 60 Liter Backpack. And give this video a like. And share it with your friends. And again, welcome to 2020. Let's all quit our jobs and just go travel. Because life is too short. Okay, signing off. Bye.